Hey, this is Travis. We're gonna go over the top five AI crypto coins is tokenomics to find out which coin has the worst tokenomics. So let's go over the goal of each of these five cryptos. So BitTensor is like a decentralized marketplace for any digital commodity, and that lends itself very well for use in AI. Near aims to be a scalable, developer-friendly blockchain platform for building decentralized applications like social media platforms. ICP aims to create a decentralized internet by enabling contracts to run at web speed with unlimited scalability. Render aims to democratize GPU-based rendering by providing artists with distributed compute for rendering tasks. And FET aims to create a network that enables autonomous agents to perform tasks and optimize resource allocation, like automating supply chain logistics. BitTensor has done almost everything right so far with tokenomics. There's been no pre-mine, no pre-sale, no VC allocation, no ICO, no treasury, no team allocation. It's been fair launched from the beginning. You can actually go and look at the BitTensor Discord to find the first few messages here when they migrated from Slack to Discord in early 2021. And you can follow its history throughout the Discord. Now there's a maximum supply of 21 million and for your halvings just like Bitcoin. And the subnets within BitTensor also have the same 21 million maximum supply and two to three year halvings as well. And of course the BitTensor Tau token is used to purchase subnet output from BitTensor. So it has a utility there. So mining is similar to Bitcoin as well where miners get a large portion of the emissions. However, part of it also goes to validators and their stakers, as well as subnet owners. So one thing that I think really sets BitTensor apart is that subnets and their participants really need to prove that whatever they're building on BitTensor has value, otherwise they're not gonna get emissions. Now keep in mind that there's no team allocation here. Whereas with some of the other coins that we'll review, the team gets a portion of all of the coins and they don't necessarily need to produce anything other than marketing. Now, before moving on to the other coins, I just wanted to show BitTensor's distribution here. So if you go to taustats.io slash analytics slash balances, you can see the distribution of wallets within BitTensor here. Uh, so you can see the first one here is Binance at nearly 800,000. That's out of 8.9 million Tau. These here are, I believe Kraken, they're just not labeled yet. I believe this one is another exchange. And then we have Mexi here. So many of these top wallets here are exchanges. There's the Tau Bridge, BitGet, etc. I guess this one here is the Kraken Cold wallet. I didn't know they had one. But let's be generous here and say like the top wallet that one person or one entity owns outside of an exchange is, let's say it's the 75,000 one here. I assume that that's probably a an exchange, but let's just pretend it is and do some math here. So 75,000 divided by 8.9 million is 0.8%. So that's like the top holder in BitTensor, including the OpenTensor Foundation wallets. And I believe this is like the top 50 or so. So let's just look at the 50th place wallet is 27,000 divided by 8.9 million is 0.3%. So I think this is actually really good as far as distributions go. When I was researching this, I actually couldn't believe it was this good. So when we look at some of the other coins, um, it would be awesome if the founders only controlled 1% of the total supply, but I don't think that's what we're gonna find. All right, let's take a look at Nier. So this one did have a pre-mine, it did have a VC allocation and a pre-sale. You can see there's a total supply of 20, you can see there's a total supply here of 1.25 billion near, but there is no maximum supply here. It's got about a 5% inflation rate per year. Now they burn transaction fees to try to reduce this inflation, but last year those burns accounted for 0.1% of that 5% inflation. So it's not really keeping up. Now the more near that you have, the more your vote counts in governance. So, so the community can vote to introduce proposals to reduce inflation. So you just have to keep in mind with Near that this can fluctuate according to whatever the community decides. Now the top 100 wallets on Near make up around 50% of the total supply. There is a lockup period for early investors to prevent sell-offs. 
Now, for me personally, lockups don't really give me that much confidence for investing in a coin. I mean, I guess it's better than no lockups, but it doesn't give me that much more confidence. My, my thinking behind that is that the team gets that lockup no matter what. They don't have to keep, keep providing value in order to get that. If you look at a BitTensor subnet, for instance, the tokenomics are such that the price will crash to zero unless you are proving some sort of utility for your token. So subnet owners on BitTensor get a portion of the emissions, but that portion in dollars or in Tau may go down if their subnet isn't producing much. So they constantly have an incentive to constantly improve their subnet rather than if they were just given 18% of the total supply of the subnet up front with like a vesting schedule, then they wouldn't be incentivized to keep producing in the same way, I don't think. Let's take a look at ICP's tokenomics. We have a circulating supply of approximately 500 million with, again, no maximum supply. And similar to NIR, ICP's token is used in governance and transaction fees are used to try to reduce the inflation. So the Definity Foundation raised quite a bit of capital before the launch of the token. There was a private funding round of over $160 million in 2018. Then there was an early supporter airdrop in 2021. And apparently there was a pre-mine as well, but I couldn't find much info on that. But at launch, the team, the foundation, their early investors and partners held about two thirds of the supply of ICP. There is a vesting schedule, but again, as an investor, I don't care very much about vesting schedules. Let's take a look at render. So a render, there is a circulating supply of 500 million with a maximum supply of a little bit over 600 million. Yay, a maximum supply. The token launched in 2017. However, there was a private sale in 2018 for 30 million. Now I'll be honest that I couldn't find reliable sources for much of this. So I might be wrong with that private sale number. However, there's lots of conflicting information on the origin of render. Uh, one thing that I can fairly confidently say is that there was investment at the beginning. It doesn't seem like it was completely fair launched. Now the token distribution on wallets and render doesn't look great. The OTOY treasury holds around 23% of the total supply of render. So that's controlled by the founders of Render. And the top 100 wallets owns around 65% of the total supply as well. Now I just wanna go back to BitTensor for a second here. If we scroll down, this is just the emission schedule for Tau really. Notably, there's no founder allocation here. There's no ICO, pre-mine, et cetera, junk. So sure the OpenTensor Foundation team had a lot more time to mine the network than anybody else but they've actually had to deliver value in order for the value of the coin to increase. They don't just get coins for free. They actually had to be mining on the network just like anybody else. So you really just can't compare BitTensor's tokenomics with any other crypto. For me, it helps my conviction and confidence in the coin to know that the founder isn't going to dump their 20% share in the future. Remember the top wallets on BitTensor have less than 1% of the total supply. So even if the founders do dump their one or 2% of the total tau, it's not gonna completely tank the price in the same way as if one of the founders of the other top five AI cryptos dumped their coins. Now let's finally take a look at FET or Artificial Super Intelligence Alliance because clearly that acronym works. Now I'll be honest, I don't really understand the Artificial Super Intelligence Alliance um, because it has a maximum supply of 7.1 billion FET I think it's going to be renamed ASI sometime soon. And also that amount has already been minted. So there's no emissions. And I guess that means that there is no new ASI up for grabs from emissions. So it sounds interesting to me, but I worry a lot about who owned what at the beginning of this token. And you can see here at the very beginning of the coin, the advisors and foundation and founders and team, they all got quite a large portion of the total amount of the coin. So without knowing anything more about this coin, I worry that it's quite centralized just based on the tokenomics.
Now, I haven't even gone into the really, really cool parts of BitTensor in this video. Like the permissionless competition is just amazing. You can see my other videos for that, but I just wanted to really highlight the importance of tokenomics in this video because for BitTensor, it allows those other parts, those really cool parts to really shine on their own without being overshadowed by some terrible tokenomics. I think BitTensor is gonna sort of become the de facto standard for a lot of these things. If another cryptocurrency coin can compete with a BitTensor subnet whose incentive mechanism is properly designed, then it probably means that that coin is doing something very well. It'll be really interesting to see how that unfolds in the future.